Hello to my slice of the millions of podcast listeners out there, and welcome to another entertaining episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the show that talks to musicians about their dogs and how amazing these creatures are. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my amazing creature, Charlie, and today we are excited to bring you a delightful conversation with Brittany Luna and Tim Hildebrand of the Philly-based ska band Catbite, who will be back on tour with the Bouncing Souls from December 6th through the 17th. And this is their big personality, Rocker Dog. So this is Nacho Business, business with a Z. Yeah, okay. he goes. He goes usually by Nacho, unless, Nacho, he, unless yeah. he's in trouble or you know he's getting the full attention. Then he gets his full name. But <laughs> yeah. this is Nacho. He is approximately eight years old. Mm-hmm. We've had him for about seven years. Yep. Um, yeah, he was basically, you know, he was oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> scratch anyway, scratch. like belly scratches. <laughs> <laughs> right on. That's the spot. Yeah, that's a new one for him. <laughs> what's he uh what's he weigh in at? Um he's probably about 65 pounds. Yeah, he okay. kind of fluctuates between 60 and 70, give or take, usually depending on the season, you know, bulks up in the winter, yeah, loses it in the summer. But so. he's super, he's got like little short, stubby legs, and he's like pretty stout. Yeah. So he's just he's all body and yeah. head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, he a, is he a particular pity? Is he uh you know an American Stafford shy or any any particular? I know there's like four breeds of pits usually. So, yeah, we, we're not positive of exactly what his breed is. I'd like to get one of those, like, the doggy uh, DNA. DNA. The yeah, doggy the doggy DNA. DNA test. We'll probably do that at some point. But he definitely is pit. And I feel like because his head is so big, he might have some kind of, like, Stafford or, like, maybe Mastiff. Yeah. But. Yeah, he's just a big old mystery. Yeah, yeah, sweet baby. We um we got uh we found him via like a, a Facebook group. Many actually it was like right when we moved in together, and just like we've been talking about getting a dog, specifically a pit bull, like rescuing a pit bull for like a, ever since we started dating, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, we found this post on Facebook for like South Philly, and it was like. There's this dog, he has a collar, he's skin and bones. He's been running around my neighborhood for like, you know, a day. He's, we we have him right now. We can't keep him because we have a couple of dogs. Um, he's, you know, definitely abused, escaped from somewhere. Yeah, he had like scratches all down his face. Oh, and yeah, so some out. sort of neglect. And and he was super skinny and he just had like the biggest head. I mean, even bigger because <laughs> his body was so small. Yeah, so like one, so Brit, she was like going to work one day and we've been talking about it for a little bit. And I'm just like, would you be mad if you, if you came home from work and we had a dog? And she's <laughs> like, Ugh. And then, like, left. <laughs> and then she came home, and we have yeah, Nacho. He's the sweetest little baby ever. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I I have a small history with pits just because my sister's very much into pit rescue, and she's got three. Mm-hmm. But I love the fact that not only is he a rescue, but it's literally you rescued him off the street. Like, you didn't go through a – there wasn't a third party, you know, mm-hmm. rescue shelter or anything like that. You went right oh, to the no. source of the person that found him in the street and took yep. him. Yep. Yep. That's yep. Amazing. And then, yeah, amazing. Yeah, and we just brought him into um, Paws, which we love. The um, what does it stand for? Club of it's the, a or... Philly Animal Welfare Society. That's yes, it. That's yes, it. <laughs> we should know that. We we work with them all the time. We've brought all our animals there. Like they do, um, get all the, their shots. They get their stuff. shots and the spayed and neutered. Um, so we brought him there. Got him all taken care of. Looked for like if there was a chip or anything. There's yeah, no chip. Nothing. Um, he was just left and. Yeah. No turning back. He's been happy since. <laughs> and the initial examination just w- revealed just malnourished and not much more or anything in particular? Um, yeah, nothing. Well, so he has like a bit of a limp that he's always had. So um, the doctor, uh, the vet was saying that most likely when he was a pup, his front leg was busted and mm-hmm. never healed properly. So it kind of just he's, goes he's in hyper, a little bit. Hyperextended in, in one of his legs. So he kind of walks like this a little He bit. walks with a right. funny limp and it's even funnier when he runs. And it, it rarely ever gives him issues. Uh, when he was a little heavier, it was giving him some um, issues. And we put him on a nice diet and definitely helped since then. Mm-hmm. We have a little a little brace for him if it gets bad. Yeah. We also have used to have a taller bed. So he would always be jumping up and down. Now we have a lot uh, smaller Small, bed. Uh, yeah, it's lower to the ground. I think that was really doing it. Good for, for him because he's a low rider. He's a low rider. 
<laughs> it's funny. I've been doing some research for the dachshund guests that I have coming on, and they've got the ramp for their dog. Oh yeah, just can't, it just can't maneuver. But I think, I think <laughs> no, pit, we, pit bulls have too much pride for something like that. We actually we did have a little staircase for our old bed because it was like it was pretty tall. I think it must have been like three feet off the ground. He mm -hmm. would be able to clear it, but there was a couple times where he was feeling a little too confident and just like missed it and just like tumbled off the bed. And so we're like, all right, we're going to get you a little staircase. But now, now we have a nice low bed for him. That's great. Now I looked back on your, so all your social medias to kind of see what was going on in your lives and, you know, the bands that you're in and a little bit of context. And what, what I found is given your name, Catboy, there was a lot of cats involved. He came into a, a home with a lot of cats. Did they get along right away? So he mostly just ignores them. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have three cats and the only one that like he, he he really just ignores them unless they're like right in his face and they all love him. They're all obsessed. They're, they want to be like, they want to be best friends with him. And so like, he doesn't like, he doesn't really get along with other dogs either. So I think it's just like any other kind of animal. If they're like paying attention to him and like giving him attention directly to his face, then he's like, get away from me. He gets very, he, but, he gets um, very ter like scared, nervous. Like, yeah. His hairs but, go up. but, but other than that, they're fine. I mean, they just are, they just like want to be near him and he's just like, whatever. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he shows signs of fear. Like he gets his, his hair up. Yeah. So like so we funny. when we first got him we start, you know would introduce him to other dogs and he was fine he didn't really care for other dogs but he never like did anything he just kind of ignored all the other dogs we'd bring him to the dog park mm -hmm. um and he would just kind of go and hang out with the people there yeah and like dogs would come up to him and he would he wouldn't even notice them he'd yeah. be like just complete blonders and stuff and and then he would go to the gate when he's ready to go and just like sit by the gate but then like one time maybe about two years after about two years after we yeah got it's when he like started to realize that there were toys in there and because like, he also he wouldn't play with he, any toys yeah, he, for a long he time he just like had to learn how to be a dog so he wasn't doing anything of the like normal dog things like play with a toy eat a treat he wouldn't do any of that and then i think after he started to realize like oh these are toys like i can play with mm -hmm. you know then he would get territorial in in the dog park yeah and we mm -hmm. had one instant where like yeah he had a ball in his mouth and then a dog came up to him, just like right, went right up to his face. And like this, these weren't our toys, by the way, which I, I don't think it's a good idea, you know, to have toys, toys in, 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 in a dog yeah, park. Yeah. Kind of got a hold of a tennis ball and um, yeah, dog came up, he snapped at it, no, like didn't bite it or anything, but it was like terrifying, you know, yeah. like yeah. big pit bull goes after, you know, small dog <laughs> making loud noises and we're just like, Oh, no, 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 no. Bad, bad. Especially, you know, with the reputation they get. So yeah. we just like, we've, since then, we've like tried introducing him to other friends, dogs. And like, for the most part, he's like totally fine. It's the only thing is like, if a dog comes up like right in his face. Yeah, invades his space. Yeah, yeah. And he like yeah. snaps and he did bite one of our one friend's dogs. Not bad at all. It's just like enough that we're like, okay, we're not going to do this yeah. anymore. Yeah. We've, we've been working on getting him muzzle trained because I, I know he wants, like he's now he like, when we go buy dogs and stuff, he looks at them and is like, oh, I like that dog. Yeah, and he wags his tail. He, he, wags seems, his like, tail. he seems like it would be all right, but we just, you know, so we're going to be safe. So we're working it. on getting muzzle trained for that. But yeah, it's it's like basically just like he's totally fine until like it, it he just go his eyes just glaze over, his hairs go up. And that's like the sign that like it's not a good time. And that's happened yeah. like once or twice with our one cat who is just loves to just lock eyes with him and just walk up to him. Uh, but yeah, I think also okay. because like it's we have two female cats and one and male cat and male cat is I think that... the male cat and Nacho are like there's something the, about him being they got a bro code yeah so, something about it well the bro code isn't good though they no. something <laughs> something something about it that Nacho doesn't doesn't like him being at maybe another like male yeah. For the most and part, most, they just yeah. Most of the time, he's just like ignoring them, and he's like focused on us. Yeah, he just wants <laughs> yeah. to lay on us like this. Yeah, <laughs> all, yeah. all day. I, I, I love it. That's. I mean, I think it's the biggest misconception of pit bulls is they're very lovable animals. Oh and they, my god! They really want to be with their people, and they want to mm -hmm. be touching and on top of their people. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This all is the time. this is his literal favorite favorite thing to do. I mean, this. look at that face. It's so funny. <laughs> I tell you, going through your social media, it's, I just I can't tell you how many times I laughed and I feel like I know him and he's just <laughs> such a 
funny dog and he has a, a big personality yeah and sure. he's so photogenic and he loves like like we you know a long time ago we're like let's put a cat bite shirt on the dog and like take pictures and he loves it because you just give him so much attention mm-hmm. and he's just like like he doesn't even struggle like he's just like all right tripods out let's go <laughs> like all the attention on me i get some treats and like he loves it <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I've seen those pictures. And it's funny, just with Halloween around the corner, there was just a post today from one of those, you know, dog centric companies that said your dog doesn't like to be, you know, you know how you dress up your dog? He doesn't like it. But to your point, I've seen it. And it seems like he's pretty content with, you know, doing whatever. Oh, yeah, because we're just all eyes are on him. So he's all about it. Yeah, like he's (laughs) even like sunglasses. We'll put them on. He just leaves them on. Like you just put them on and just rest (laughs) on it. He just looks at you like, what's up? (laughs) it's yeah i mean you know definitely not all dogs and like some i'm sure it's like some people like some dogs it could just kind of be traumatizing or like you know like when you keep trying and like they're not liking it but yeah but he's just this guy is chill like his demeanor is super chill so we've never it's never been an issue yeah (laughs) that's great well i noticed you know i usually ask you know what is there training involved and i saw there was a post where he got us his certificate and he had like his graduation <laughs> walk mm-hmm. uh-huh was he that a so terrible was that a at like a pet co or something yeah yeah and that yeah was, i think it was a pet co and that was something you guys participated in along with him mm-hmm. and not yeah. like a drop off yeah yeah it was it was a it was like a once a week class that we did he's he's always had the worst time on walks he like it's definitely got to be some sort of like ptsd thing that just like he he listens so well like when we're in the house and then like ever since we've got him we take him out into the into the wild and onto the streets of philly and like block by block he's a completely different dog like certain scents and certain noises i mean obviously it definitely has something to do with like when he was a pup and like you know Mm -hmm. wandering the streets and stuff you know we did this class to try and get a little bit better because like he's he's a a rescue so we're like trying to like get like some training involved and like especially with like his breed and stuff and did it i mean we did our uh, it did a lot for us for sure oh yeah he's still kind of a a a wild card whenever we take walks Mm -hmm. um but he's definitely gotten better but it's just like kind of something that like has always been with him he's just kind of like sometimes he'd just like he kind of just like he'll sometimes it seems like he's like dissociating when yeah. he's outside it's so and weird. i don't know if it's like too much like sounds and sights overwhelming yeah. him and mm-hmm. then he just goes to another place and then we, we'll be like try, we'll have like a hot dog in front of him and he's Plus, just like he's just not there he like looks past you and you're yeah. like calling him like nacho 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 like look at me look at me like so, have like some his favorite treat in his hand he just like looks past it yeah but and he's then, gotten a lot better a lot yeah, better with walks yeah. yeah so just well i wonder if part of his neglect was he was never inside you know so does he equate being outdoors with survival you know yeah, like his survival that's... his survival instinct kicks in yeah could be very well it's yeah. definitely something like that because like as soon as we're inside like he's so great he does all these tricks like he listens like mm-hmm. it's just like anything not true what's up yeah like come here okay but like we'll be outside and then he's just like eh, like uh, maybe you know uh, half the time he's like that but the other half the time it's like a little bit of a struggle and just fighting to get his attention yeah but just a lot a lot of treats and patience with this guy when we're yeah. outside now you in, you insinuated about having the breed and maybe some of the baggage it comes with do you do you see bias on the streets when you're walking the dog you know are people crossing or do you oh, yeah. get comments or when you're at oh, the dog yeah. park are people like you better hang on to that thing yeah, yeah. People, people like people who are just passing by that don't even have a dog like they're they don't have a dog that's just them passing by they'll be like do you have your dog and i'm like mm-hmm. what do you mean do i have my dog yeah i have my dog with me and they're like do you got him do you got him locked up i'm like he's not gonna do anything just like walk by mm-hmm. we're just walk we're minding our business you mind your own business yeah but it's, yeah we I, i've gotten that comment a lot mm-hmm. before especially when we're in south philly yeah um i feel like it's more mm-hmm. like this the area that we're in now I super feel like dog friendly it's super dog friendly and like when we were at the dog park um th- that we would get that comment a lot like you know just or just like people like keeping an extra eye on him and stuff yeah oh, it's, it sucks yeah. they don't understand how sweet they are i know i mean i'm gonna have a video of how sweet he is he's gonna be 30 minutes <laughs> of sleeping <laughs> so uh, 
um, on your, uh, I think it's on your Instagram, you say you're on tour forever. And the proof, which I've seen on your website <laughs> and past posts, is you guys are constantly on tour. Yes. Um, yeah. That begs the question, does he come with you ever on local East Coast tours or anything? No. I wish. Uh... I mean, I kind of wish that he could be on tour with us. But at the same time, it's like so exhausting for us. I can't imagine yeah. how exhausting mm -hmm. it would be for him. Yeah. And also, you know, having five people in the van, then plus a dog, plus all your gear. <laughs> that would be wild maybe if we had a tour bus eventually but we have a we have a roommate who's, who's, a, been good, his, who's a good friend of ours he's and been his dog sitter dog and cat sitter since we got him basically mm -hmm. it's our, our friend jack and he used to like because uh, you know we got uh we got all the all the, well, we had nacho and Derek and xena all before we started cat bite mm -hmm. and like uh, ever since we started like le whenever we leave we our friend jack would come over and just like you know he's known them all for a long time and like about a uh, year yeah about a year ago we had to move so we're like jack would you like to just move in with us then it's just full time you know your full time <laughs> living nanny yeah uh, it's, it's kind of a perfect situation and also we noticed that you know when we would start to get our bags out like you know, for touring yeah. and traveling. And then Jack would come over. And Nacho like would sign. immediately <laughs> go into like, like anxiety. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he knew like exactly what was going to happen. Like mom and dad are leaving. And then now Jack's here and like something's happening. So it's been like, I've seen like a lot less anxiousness in him. Yeah. Um, because it's just a consistent, like someone is always here. Yeah. And, like, ja like Uncle Jack is here. Yeah. So we're good. It still sucks. I hate it, you know. Yeah. But also, we we are pretty strategic. Like the long, we we try and make all of our tours frequent, but not long periods of times. So like this mm -hmm. year is the most we've ever toured in our lives, and it's like uh, just over ninety shows. Um, but like we've been doing it like two weeks here, one week here, yeah. three weeks here, right. three, like, and that's why I, like we were so stoked. Like we have you know these three back to back tours, but we're like, all right, we have five days off. Let's just fly home mm -hmm. so we can see our animals and mm -hmm. so our bandmates can see their partners and our animals. Right. Um, so, yeah, it sucks. But, like, it's, I think it's definitely, you know, the best scenario for him. And he's he's still very happy. when And he he's definitely gotten to the point where he knows that we always come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he used to give us the cold shoulder when we would yeah. come back. Now he doesn't at all. And now he's, he's like, all right, mom and dad are back. Tell me stories. How yeah, was that's, it? That's <laughs> we great. I was going to ask <laughs> that. I was going to say, what kind of welcome do you get? Do you get the cold shoulder or do you get the hero's welcome? <laughs> we did. We did get the cold shoulder a couple times. It, like, and it made me so upset. Yeah. Um, it was like the, the first two times that we were gone for more yeah. than like five days. He was like, you guys left me. Yeah. And now, we're, yeah, now it's just like he's so excited every yeah. time we get back. And we like, right away. We, we also FaceTime him every now and then. We try and FaceTime the cats, but they don't really care. <laughs> I've, I've noticed face dogging that, or face, face dogging, face timing <laughs> the dog. It doesn't seem like they, they take in the screen much. Like no, I can never yeah, engage. I, no. I, yeah, definitely the voice. Like Nacho will just like, <laughs> like you know, we'll Facetime Jack, our roommate, and like you know, like hold hold up the phone, and we start talking, and Nacho's just like, he, yeah, he gets, he can tell that it's yeah. us, but he just doesn't know where we are. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about your wedding. Your wedding from an outsider's perspective, mine looking on social media, looked like a blast. It looked like yeah. it started in the day and ended sometime in the night. Yeah. yeah, and I saw that Nacho was present. Was yes. Was he involved, or and was did did your sitter have to kind of mind him while things were going on? He, he was he wasn't involved. Like he wasn't the ring bearer or anything. He was just kind of like the informal greeter. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> so we had um, it was uh, just outside of Philly, um, almost exactly five years ago, and it was like on um, on the river. There's like these these cool old boathouse things uh, for like the rowing teams, and like it belonged to some club, and it was like cool building. And then most of it was just like outside and like mm -hmm. some grass area. So yeah. It, it, you know, it was all outside. We it was like a ten minute ceremony, and then just a very long, fun party. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a band play uh, called the Pie Tasters, or yeah. awesome a band, uh, good friends of ours. And we had a nice DJ, and yeah, Nacho was just kind of like we uh, we had a, a couple of our friends just kind of taking turns, like like we had like our our current bass player, who's also um, he's he works for a dog daycare company. He's a manager okay. for a do doggy Perfect. daycare. 
uh, he was kind of, he was kind of in charge of him for a he, little he bit. He kind of took the lead on that. Yeah, he because he's very good with dogs. So he most every time I saw Nacho, it was he was usually with Ben. Yeah, there's a good picture of, of the two of them, okay. Ben holding Nacho. <laughs> um, but yeah, he Nacho had so much fun. Just like he was tuckered out. He was. Yeah, he even ended up at the bar that we went to afterwards, and he was just asleep on the floor in the bar, and <laughs> everyone was just taking. Tur- there was like a, just a circle of people just petting, sleeping Nacho at the bar. Yeah, um, time. Yeah, he it was great. He slept so good for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he always sleeps good, but like, yeah, he had a really good time at that. Now, for for a band named Cat Bite, is he on brand for you guys? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he doesn't bite, but <laughs> I we do have like um. I mean, it's one of my favorite shirts. Is it's a it says cat bite, and then it's a picture of him wearing a ska hat, yeah. and I just love it because people just get so confused. Like the um the eighteen T guy we were talking to, the, yeah, okay. I was I was wearing it uh like it was like a sweatshirt. Uh, we have a sweatshirt and a t shirt version. We were at Target the other day, and you know we we're just talking to the eighteen T guy forever, and he was just like he was obsessed with the fact that there was a dog. And on the t-shirt and said cat but like he just like wouldn't stop talking about it and like i thought yeah that was funny but then of course we have a lot of i think it's also like hilarious that like he kind of is the mascot for cat bite yeah, um, yeah. he's definitely <laughs> yeah he we've tried to we've tried to get our cats involved and they do not yeah like they're just dressed up yeah and we're just like okay say no more say yeah. no more we will let nacho be the mascot but no. you know if we tell him he's a cat he'll just think he's a cat yeah and he's been around since the inception of the band so i assume the fans you know do you get feedback from the fans quite a bit you know at oh yeah shows they or love him. it's it's always funny like people uh, always ask like people will come to merch tables and they say how's nacho yeah and then like <laughs> you like sometimes we'll be walking and like uh out like around philly like you just were doing that the other day you're walking nacho and someone's like oh my gosh the famous nacho oh, that's right. and like and that's it's right. like oh i'm brett <laughs> yeah that's yeah awesome. there was two people that um i met um i've met them a couple times they they live in philly and they've been to our philly shows but yeah i was out walking nacho and they were like oh my gosh nacho finally meet you in person that's funny and it's probably the, it's probably the the detail that convinces people that you guys are of cat bite it's like well it, it, it looks like them but there's the but dog there's nacho. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. it's gotta be <laughs> it's true <laughs> Um, how is he with, I guess I'll, the context of this was, I, I've got a dog, obviously, um, hosting a show about dogs. Um, I had a surgery last year, just a simple back surgery, but my dog was my constant companion. I would say my nurse, but he never filled my water with ice or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I did see Tim that you had a hip replacement recently. Yes. And I was wondering, did, did Nacho do his part in supporting your, uh, you know, your recovery? Yeah, he tried we, his very best. He tried his best. We always, every time I'm, any of us are sick we call or him like Nurse Nacho, Nurse Nacho mm-hmm. because he wants to help, but he doesn't know how. Um, and there, we were so, I mean, we were terrified of him because he always just like jumps, you know, and wants to be on top of us. But like, obviously, you can't do that. Tim just got a freaking hip replacement. I, we had to. We were terrified that he was gonna jump right on his new hip. Yeah, because that was like, you know, my biggest fear is like him jumping on me. Because that's, I mean, he, this is where he needs to be at all times laying on me so we had to like i basically was living on the couch for two weeks um yeah. before and barely walking so we had to basically make like a blockade so he couldn't jump on me but he yeah he i think he was more of an emotional support for you yeah during yeah, yeah, that yeah. time because like a brit you know had to sleep alone in the bed and i'm down <laughs> on the couch so like i think he was just kind of emotional support for the whole family during yeah. that period. Yeah. There was one po- <laughs> one time I saw my life flash before my eyes. <laughs> I was like, I, cause I, yeah, it was like hard to move anywhere. And like, I, I think there was a gap in the, in the blockade <laughs> and I'm like, do- Brits over doing something elsewhere. And I see him look and he's, he locks eyes with me and he comes over like, like he's getting ready to jump and he like starts to jump. I'm like, I like freak out. I he was going right for my hip, and like I think I was able to like push him off at the last <laughs> second and like divert him. It was <laughs> just like seventy pounds of pure know. meat. Just 
going right onto my brand new hip. <laughs> but he didn't, and we're all good. Yeah. It was scary though. <laughs> but he, I, I think he was just bummed that he couldn't. I mean, there was a couple times we would um. But he what, would just like be by your feet. Yeah. At the time. Because like I would have like the ottoman, and I'd be like going forward, and I would like have to make sure he, he would like try and inch his way over. Like he'd be, <laughs> I, I would see him over there, and he's like. Oh. And I'm like, come on, just look from far away. Like, don't touch. <laughs> Poor Nacho. <laughs> yeah, but he was definitely very supportive. And also, like, you know, I, I wasn't able to walk him as much because, like, you mm-hmm. know, Britt Brit has still had to go to work. He knew that, like, I couldn't really walk and stuff. So, like, when Britt was at work, he's, like, understanding, like, okay, I might have to wait until she gets home to walk, which was nice. Do you but guys also, generally have about a 50-50 share of responsibility and I and I know you yeah. you you want to have that, but do you have mm-hmm. that, or does somebody usually do the walking and somebody usually do the feeding, or is it we are both um, are kind of in tune? So when when we're off tour, um, we have completely different schedules. Mm-hmm. I work for a moving company, which is basically all morning, and she works as a bartender, so it's like all night. Mm-hmm. So um, it's kind of it kind of works out for Nacho and the best. You know, they wake up together mm-hmm. and then the take t- care of breakfast and take him out on his like morning walk. And yeah, then there's like the tiny overlap where I'm home and Britt's home mm-hmm. and, you know, get to hang out with him together. And then she goes to work. And then I kind of, you know, make take the long evening walk and give him dinner at, you know, take him to sleep. So it's yeah, I mean, we when it's pretty like evenly fair and then like yeah. you know when we have our days off you know we like to just do it's we always definitely prefer like taking them on long walks together mm-hmm. it's just kind yeah. of fun and so yeah i think it's <laughs> we're pretty much even stevens when it comes to that mm-hmm. that's good now back to the uh band you know you've got the t-shirt i've seen the videos he's in a lot of videos has he made it on record no i guess not no well no. No, no barking or jingle of the collar. There's definitely been well, like, on that we've one. De- we've definitely had recordings. Like I'm remembering a recording that we did where he was like he squeaked like a toy or something. But I don't know if that I think w- it might have gotten cut. But we left. We just like left it on like the demo part, and then right. Didn't yeah, it was def- like it was definitely on a demo. But I think we we cut it. But we should we should have him like do like a little. I don't know. Like, cameo. Like, he, yeah, like if he gets a little bark yeah. in there or something. So, I mean, the thing is, he doesn't. Toy. Yeah, because he doesn't like. He doesn't bark rarely ever. Um, mm-hmm. it's always catches us off guard when he barks. It's <laughs> we're just like, wait, what? Did yeah. that just come out of the dog? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, he's like. The it's... only time he's like really loud is like when we're doing like a podcast or something or an interview. He'll go into his like little toy box and, and he... he gets like the hardest toy <laughs> and just slams and he them just on. like throws it all around the room he's like dropping it and we have wood floors so it's just making loud noises constantly yeah it's always because we're on a podcast or we're doing an interview right. and we're paying attention to him but yeah it's a good one because he gets to be yeah he gets rubs the it's whole time it's all about you now yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm starting to see a pattern when it's yeah. about him yeah. it's about him he's cool with it uh-huh yeah. well <laughs> i wrap up every show with the zoomies I don't know if Nacho has the zoomies. You know, yes. sometimes those bigger dogs don't uh, does. Yeah, zip yeah. <laughs> around as much. But uh, um, the first question is, do you kiss Nacho on the mouth? Yes. I I give him pecks <laughs> on the cheek. Okay. I, 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 I let him I let him I lick my I let him lick my face, not my mouth. I <laughs> yeah. give him a kiss right on my lips. I know. I love it. <laughs> I was curious to ask that question to a couple because I knew I was I was kind of hoping it would be split. So yeah, I got, yeah. <laughs> got my wish. Question two, does he have a theme song? What would his like walk up music to the plate be or his red carpet music be? My mom's song. Yeah. My mom has a song for him. Um <laughs> it goes like this. Naturally, naturally, he's my baby boy. The naturally, I thought rally. He's my big enjoy. Cha cha cha. That's it. it. Yeah, I know. I was going to say his, been... his physical reaction was great. <laughs> I, yeah, my sick. mom. My mom came up with that song every time she. Comes every over, time she, she sees him. That's awesome. Yeah. I forgot the that's lyrics. <laughs> you can pretty okay. much say whenever. Yeah. You <laughs> Question three. I know he doesn't go on tour with you, but if he went on tour with you, what would he insist be on the rider? Oh, okay. Well. 
Probably peanut butter. Probably a fresh. Oh lamb yeah, chop. lamb chop. Every t- every new sh- every show we go to, he has like lamb chop. He's lamb obsessed chop. with lamb chops. Oh, oh there we go. He likes. Oh, like, yeah. There you go. Oh, lamb chop, God. peanut butter, and probably hot dogs. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. When you get that tour bus and he comes uh, with you, make sure those three are on the uh, on the rider. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Question four is: Do you? use a dog voice to speak to him or do you give him a dog voice um i definitely use like a like a dog voice to talk to him qt voice or yeah yeah mm-hmm. super baby voice but um we've talked about like what he would sound like i just feel like he would sound like pretty dopey <laughs> yeah he'd be like what's up ma what's up what's up? <laughs> <laughs> look at that yeah. face gosh so funny <laughs> Okay, and last question number five is: Is there a dog organization, charity, walker, anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Definitely pause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pause. They're just like the greatest people. We're actually in a couple hours. We're doing a a a, a cooking class with them. It's a benefit for them. Oh, great! Uh, it's awesome. We yeah, we've like we've done a bunch of our like merchandise things where we'll raise money for them, and they're just like. The nicest people ever. Everyone, uh, Lauren is like the uh, one person that we cont- uh, are in contact with a lot. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they've, they've spayed and neutered all of our animals and we yeah, they do go there for our shots. And they, yeah, they're, they're just really good for the community. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I, I happened to look them up just to get some background and they've got a great, they're, they're part of a coalition in Philly that's like an, uh, a push for no kill to make mm-hmm. the city no kill, which is, very interesting because where I'm at, that's I've always thought that's that's something we kind of have to, you know, bring our resources together and, you know, yeah. create a similar situation or coalition. So that was that was nice to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're great. Well, Tim and Brittany, thanks so much for letting me spend time with Nacho and yourselves yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know you're on tour forever, and I know uh, you're coming <laughs> to my neck of the woods. So uh, I hope uh, I can introduce myself to you guys in person soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Looking you so forward much. To it. <laughs> But thanks again, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on stage. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.